wide is the Sixth Street Bridge? It's got to be four lanes across, sidewalks, plain small enough. He might be able to set it down if he's got the balls. Clark wanted to come up with a more dramatic ending, and he asked me to suggest some ideas of where a plane might land if we went with that type of an ending. So I opened up a book called Above Los Angeles and started to think from the air, if I was a pilot flying around and I had to put a plane down or I wanted to put a plane down, where would I do that? And there's a great shot of the Sixth Street Bridge in downtown Los Angeles. And I realized that if you made your approach from the east over the barrio and you came into the Sixth Street Bridge, which is about 3,000 feet long, that you would end up with all your subsequent scenes with the city of Los Angeles as your backdrop. We never really thought about trying to land on the bridge. We, we, we had contemplated doing some approaches, and legally we had the room to do that. But because it would only give us one piece in the, in the puzzle, we elected to go ahead and do it all CG. Well, in the uh, Lear landing on the bridge sequence, the idea was to land a Lear jet on a very long, but not long enough bridge. Actually, there's really no way you could do that in the real world. The benefit of doing it in CG is you can do multiple takes on it without putting anybody's life at, in jeopardy. Our effects animator, Clay Dale, uh, came up with an ingenious idea of taking a flight simulation program, flying the plane as if it's virtual world, and then exporting that animation out to our computer animation package. What it gave was a very realistic feel to the airplane, and so we had a very uh, organic and very real feeling uh, flight of the airplane. This is a quick breakdown of the elements that we rendered for uh, the Lear landing shot, and the very first thing you'll see is the live plate. This was the original shot. It has a crane in it. And the next step, you'll see it's the live sequence with the wireframe airplane on it and a reference object that represents the bridge. This next pass is the diffuse pass of the, the plane, and that represents the color information and some of the shading information on the plane. Another element we rendered is uh, the light and the reflection pass. Actually, this is two passes blended into one. Another element is the reflection of the Learjet on the bridge itself. This was the volumetric smoke of the wheels hitting the pavement. And this is the final composite. You'll see that the camera shake adds a lot of excitement. From touchdown on, it was shots that were done of the special effects aircraft. The Sixth Street Bridge is a main traffic artery. I think we could shut it down at 7.30 at night and we couldn't go beyond 5 a.m. It, it didn't give us a lot of time because that meant that you couldn't really move on to the bridge until 7.30. By the time you moved on to it and got a first shot, it was time for lunch. We shot pretty much in continuity. We had to because of the deterioration of the aircraft which was on-screen deterioration. I mean, once it crashed and certain pieces came off, it would have been really hard to go back. It was a big sequence, and there's a chase that precedes the crash. There'll be gunfire from the limo coming at us. That recipe for disaster complete. After we shot the crash, then we had to keep that alive and looking realistic, and that and that involved sliding this this fuselage with pieces flying off of it and fire coming out of wings and the sparks under the belly and continuing on down the bridge for another you know, several hundred yards. We assumed that at that point the plane's probably in in real time going something like 100 miles an hour. At that point, we started to put cameras in crash boxes. This camera is a crash housing. It has a wide lens. It's a $500 housing. It's a $200,000 camera. That's what 500 bucks does a lot for $200,000. That's why they have the crash housings. Also, the main thing is to protect the film. We drug the airplane with two trucks, side by side. One was hooked onto more of the nose, and one was hooked onto the back, and it allowed the airplane with, with that to, to kind of, as it's coming toward you, to kind of have that kind of movement, which, which we thought added a little more realistic flavor to it. In all the takes we did, we ran over a lot of cameras. Uh, I think we only damaged one. I mean, we shot multiple cameras. We had five cameras almost all the time. And uh, it takes what it takes, and you, you shoot until you get what you want. It's like an infinite Rubik's Cube. There's no obvious solution sometimes. Uh, but uh, when you do crack it, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting. It's just a great overall feeling at the end to see it actually on film and on screen. I'm really happy with, with the way it turned out.